Ahead of the big debate, the big interview. Hi, I'm Eric Bowling, and this is Cashing In. And no matter what you think of Donald Trump, polls show he'd be the GOP nominee if the vote was held today. But many in the party are still not sold. I think the GOP establishment is afraid of Donald Trump, and I asked him why. I don't understand it. I say what I say, which is something, make America great again. I mean, basically, what I want to do, Eric, is make our country great again. We're going in such a wrong direction, and it's not going to be turned around very easily, because believe me, we are really far down almost, and I don't want to say it disrespectfully, but we're in big trouble, okay? And I'm doing the right thing. I'm saying the right things in terms of the country. But the level of animosity and the level of hatred from some people who I think are good people is incredible. But likewise, the level of support is beyond incredible, including some of the pundits, in all fairness. So uh, it's a mixed bag, but I'm out there, and you see the poll numbers have been fantastic. I'm very happy with it, and hopefully I'll get a chance to make our country great again. Yeah, yeah so uh, I've come out and said I like what Donald Trump is saying. I like what he's doing. I have a lot of, a lot of my fan support, so my fan base says I like Donald because he says what he means, means what he says, and it's refreshing to hear it. But I get beat up, even from some people in my own tent at times, for defending some of the things you're saying. You've called yourself thin-skinned at times. How do you handle the attacks? You just have to handle it. I mean, I, things are said about me that are so totally false. Uh, I was saying today to somebody, I mean, they'll, they'll put people on television that I never met, I never saw, I never spoke to, and they become the expert on Donald Trump. They don't know anything about me, and they say negative things, and they have no idea they're wrong. So you just, you know, you have no choice. I've never had a thing like this. I've always had a good press because financial press maybe is easier. It's more based on numbers. But this political press, so much of it is dishonest. Now, with that being said, you have probably 40% that's terrific and honorable and good. But you get boy, a fair shake by the press? I think I get a fair shake from 40 to 50%, and some of it is really dishonest and knowingly dishonest, which is too bad. All right. So debate is five days away. One of the candidates, I've read that one of the candidates has actually said Donald Trump is bringing a lawnmower to the b debate and there's only one Bush on stage. Is Jeb Bush in the Donald Trump's bullseye? Not at all. I, I think he's a nice person, actually. I don't, I don't know him, but I think he's a nice person. I just think we need a lot of energy. We need a lot of smarts. We need a lot of street smarts, in a sense, because if you look at what China's doing, what Japan is doing, what Saudi Arabia, I mean, they make a billion dollars a day, and we're protecting them. We get nothing for it every time they have a problem. And I, I have many friends from Saudi Arabia. They buy my apartments. Well, we're I, buying their oil, you're saying. I mean, yeah, we're, no, we're I'm just saying. We protect them. They make a billion a day, a billion, and we protect them. We get nothing. When you look at Mexico, I love Mexico. The leaders are too smart for our leaders. They're cunning. They're sharp. Our people aren't sharp, and they're not smart. So, you know, it's uh, it's something has to change in our country, or we're going to be in big, Let's big stay trouble. Stay on Mexico for a second, Donald. Um, you, you, immigration, Mexico, the wall with Mexico put you on the map big time, and you said Mexico, you're going to build a wall. No Absolutely. questions that you're you're a builder. You know how to build right. things. But you also said Mexico is going to pay for it. People want specifics. How are they going to pay for They're it? They're going to pay for it. They're making a fortune. Ford just moved a plant. They're building a plant in Mexico. Two and a half billion dollars for a plant. Think of it, a plant. Two and a half billion dollars. I know about construction. How do you spend two and a half? It's a massive plant. Going to take jobs out of the United States. So many, a, a plant was going to be built in Tennessee. And a big plan from a big foreign, you know, auto company. It's now going to Mexico. They're not building in Tennessee. Well, they'll send us their cars, though. Oh, they're going to send us the car. We're not going to pay any tax. They're not going to pay any tax. They're going to drive them right in. They're going to. We're going to flood the country with cars. Where do we benefit? Well, so tell and me where, 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 I have where great does respect. the money come from to pay for the wall? Let me explain. I have great respect for Mexico. Their leaders are too smart. They're killing us. They're killing us at the border and they're killing us with trade. You know, Mexico, in a certain way, is the new China, if you look at what's happening, because they're really becoming a car capital of the world. So we need people that can deal with this, Eric. We have people that don't know anything about business. They don't know about trade. Uh, they get in there because they're politically connected, and this is the people we have, you know, these are the people we have negotiating. And one of the big things, and I think one of the reasons I'm doing so well in the polls, Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm not going to have the donors and the special interests and the lobbyists tell me what to do because I don't need their money. 
I'm not running with their money. I see every time Jeb is out in the Hamptons raising money, I know all the guys that are giving them money. They don't give money unless they're getting something for it. Is that maybe part of the reason why the establishment class is, is worried about you because you don't need their money? I think it could be a part. Yeah, I don't want money. I don't want, I want to just do what's right for the country. You know, I don't need to be doing this. And I just feel that I want to do something that's going to be great for our country. We can make our country so great. And you know what? If it keeps going along the way it's going right now, you're never going to be able to turn it around. All right, just finish, finishing up the Mexican wall issue. So would, if Mexico builds a, a car that's sold in America, would there be a fee attached to the car sale so that we can put that towards the border Unless, of the wall? Unless, here's the thing, it doesn't have to be that. They're making a fortune with us in every way, not just with cars and not just with manufacturing. Oil. Mexico, plus we pay Mexico a lot of money. So we're going to have to have a wall, and it won't be complete wall because there's some areas you don't need a wall because of, you know, geography. It's just, it works. Uh, you'll also have fences in certain areas. You'll have fences, and you'll also have, I'll tell you what, we have some incredible people that I met when I was in Laredo. We have some incredible people. It's called Border Patrol people. They want to do their jobs. They asked me to go. And I went and I met them, and they are fantastic people, but they're told not to do your job. You know, they're standing there, and people are walking into our country right in front of them. So we're going to build a wall, and we're going to build fence, and we're going to have great protection, and people aren't coming into this country. Very interesting. They bring drugs into this country from all over. They bring drugs into our country, and they take the money out. And the people in Laredo were telling us this. Massive amounts of drugs come in, that's bad. Massive amounts of money goes out, and that's, that's bad. So we get it, we get a double hit. We get the drugs, they get, get the money. The money. Get I don't know, cash. somehow that doesn't sound like such a good deal. So well. Let's role play a little bit, if you don't mind. Go ahead. You're on the, you're, it's the debate five days from now. Only, instead of on stage, you're sitting next to Megyn Kelly and you're asking the questions. One question for each. What do you ask Jeb Bush? Well, you need energy, and I'd say, do you have the energy to get out there and do it? You need a lot of energy to get this country straightened out. And the question would be, does he have, I think he's a nice person, does he have the energy to do it? Energy? You need energy, energy. That's, that's the one question you're going to ask, the energy? Well, that's a very important question. Look, Jeb has hit me on tone, yeah. T-O-N-E. And Hillary's hit me on tone. Well, he also hit you on immigration. He, had, he did a Spanish-speaking interview uh, with Univision and took a shot at you. Well, look. Jeb is very, very strong on Common Core. He likes Common Core. I don't. I think it's terrible. I think education should be local. The people of Iowa, New Hampshire, and every place else, they want to take care of their kids. They don't want somebody in Washington doing it. So he's very bad on that issue, in my opinion. Now, you know, it's his opinion, but I want it local. He wants it coming out of bureaucrats from Washington. That's bad. And he's very weak on immigration. I mean, he's very, very weak. I mean, it's going to be a porous border. It's going to be more like we have right now, which takes away jobs, which has tremendous security problems, as we found out from San Francisco with Kate and so many other places. Uh, so I think, you know, frankly, I think Jeb has to change some stances. I think he has to change on Common Core, and I think he has to get tough on immigration. Marco Rubio. Well, I don't know him. Uh, he uh, seems like a nice person. I mean, I don't know him. Uh, I would say this. He was very much in favor of a weak, he had a, I would call it a weak immigration policy. He was in favor of amnesty, or essentially he wanted to do something. He went down in the polls, big league, and now all of a sudden he changed. That's not the reason you should be changing. Okay. Scott Walker? Uh, his, his, his state, Wisconsin, has tremendous problems with debt. It's loaded up to the gills with, I mean, he's pouring debt on there. As you know, they were going to have a, they wanted to sort of see if they could have some kind of a surplus. It turns out to be a $2.2 billion deficit. And there's another thing in Wisconsin, and he came up a few months ago, gave me a plaque. He gave me a beautiful plaque thanking me for everything I do. It was very nice. But they have another problem in Wisconsin. There's tremendous divisiveness, the level of hatred among everybody. I mean, they're all fighting. But you have a $2.2 billion deficit. Nobody knew that. Everybody said, oh, Scott's great because he's fighting the unions. Well, it's wonderful to fight the unions. But in the meantime, they're doing very bad economically. I think they're number 36 or 38 as a state in terms of bad. They're doing badly. They're doing very poor jobs-wise. And they have a huge deficit. So I think he's got, I think it's a much different Scott than people thought. Okay. Last one. And some say you're out Chris Christine, Chris Christie. 
What's the question to Chris Christie if he's on that stage? Well, I mean, I know Chris very well. He's a friend. Some, many of these people are friends, and many of them I respect. But, you know, New Jersey is not doing well. It's very simple. It's not doing well. And uh, maybe he'll get it turned around. Maybe he won't. But he's been there for a while. Uh, he, they were asking him how would he be as president. He said he'd be good. I would be a great president. I would be a great jobs president, and I would be a great security president. And let me tell you, I'll take care of our vets because our vets are treated horribly. Our vets are treated like third-class citizens. Our, our vets will be treated properly with Donald Trump. And I think that's one of the things that's very important to me, Eric. When I look and I, and I see so many veterans that are great people, and they come to me, these really terrific people, and there are tears coming down their eyes. They've never been treated worse than they're being treated now. That will change. Yeah, and in, in, in the aftermath of the McCain comment, a lot of people were saying, boy, that's it. The Trump campaign is over now, and, and you've done nothing but expand your lead in, in, in many polls. Well, John McCain is disappointing because he's done very poorly with respect to the vets. And he's a politician like so many politicians, all talk, no action. And when I was in Phoenix, we had tremendous thousands and thousands of people there, and he called them crazies. I said, that was terrible. And then he tried to say it was a term of endearment. It wasn't a nice thing to say. Those are great Americans. Those people were great. And all they wanted is security at the border. That's all they wanted. They wanted security at the border. They didn't want the illegals pouring in. It's Phoenix, and they didn't want, it's Arizona. They didn't want the illegals pouring in. So that wasn't good. But I will say this, uh, the vets are special, and we have to take care of them. And now it's your turn. The Donald answers your questions and find out what he has planned for the first big debate. That's next.